Welcome back to Film Recaps. Today I'm going to show you The Aeronauts, a 2019 adventure movie that was based on a real story. A man and a lady in a balloon are fighting the wind high in the air. The man dives off in an attempt to save his loved one because simply tossing away all the weight has failed. Amelia Wren, an astronaut feeling anxious about her first balloon journey in more than two years, recalls this memory. Antonia, her sister, believes that Amelia shouldn't travel if she's not feeling well. But Amelia is obstinate and insists that she only needs a moment. The majority of Londoners had gathered to watch the balloon take flight in 1862. The scientist who will be traveling with this team, James Glosher, isn't too concerned about the ominous clouds in the sky, but John True, a friend and fellow scientist, is. The man who has invested his money in this flight and is interested in seeing it happen, supports James' claim that he has done the right calculations and it would be okay. John can worry all he wants, but the balloon is going up today. Amelia is late, but she makes a big deal out of it because she knows that the money from the sale of tickets pays for their trips. She rides the roof of her coach car to get there dressed in a very bright, circus-like attire, then dances around the balloon platform cracking jokes and trying to get a very awkward James to play along. Despite James' objections, she even brings a dog that will fly with them. Amelia finally releases the balloon without giving James a chance to complete taking notes and measurements. After making a speech about adventure and pledging to surpass the French record of 2300 feet, she ascends to the balloon hoop as soon as they are a few feet above the platform and lowers the dog, who has been carrying a parachute the entire time, and makes a safe landing as part of the act. James uses his binoculars to observe the British Society building as they soar above London and take in the breathtaking scenery, remembering how it all began. He and John had scaled a roof to view another balloon successfully launched two years prior. James again requested financing from the British Society to embark on a similar journey, but he was denied because everyone laughed at his belief that the weather could be predicted. Even James' parents, who are equally offended by this as he is, hear the slurs back in the present. While James sends out his first pigeon with his readings, Amelia switches from her show dress to some warmer attire. They enter a foggy area as the balloon ascends, and Amelia fears about the likelihood of a storm just like John does. James claims that his forecasts do not include a storm, but the weather quickly disproves him as lightning starts to show nearby and a very strong wind starts to blow, rattling the balloon. Amelia refuses to land the balloon because she knows how to escape the storm. They simply need to fly higher, passing above the clouds. James falls on the bottom of the basket and strikes his head causing it to bleed. James and Amelia are forced from the basket by the sudden, unusually violent shaking of the balloon brought on by the wind. James falls into the basket as they struggle to hold on before the wind picks up again but Amelia is left clinging to one of the ropes. James realizes that he isn't strong enough to help her climb back, and the wind is still working against them. To get over this small obstacle, he ties himself to the basket before giving Amelia his hand and pulling her back inside. She starts throwing sandbags out as soon as she gets inside, which helps the balloon ascend higher and escape the clouds. They are caressed by the lovely sunlight, and there is complete silence up here. James has never seen an Oriole before. It is a stunning sight that they get to watch. While they are changing the ropes to assist the balloon hold better, they enjoy screaming into the void together, but soon they start to hear city sounds carried by the humidity. James is excited about this finding and starts taking notes, but Amelia can't help but have a flashback to her previous flight when her husband Pierre Renz passed away. Amelia refused to leave the house after losing her spouse, she also drank excessively and refused to take a wash. It continued like this for two years. Prior to dragging her back into the real world and bringing her to a gathering the family had been invited to, Antonia had grown weary of seeing her in this state. It was obvious that Amelia wasn't enjoying herself there, especially since all the males, save for one, were too afraid of her to approach her. Before disclosing the real purpose for his conversation, James struck up a conversation with her. He required her support for his plan to explore the sky in order to demonstrate the viability of weather forecasting. Even though Amelia typically wouldn't care about someone's social standing, she didn't like the idea that James had lied to her because she quickly realized that he had sneaked into that party and wasn't really invited. Amelia finally fell in and agreed to work with James. After listening to a moving speech he gave on the positive impact such discoveries could have on humanity. Later, when Antonia learned of this information, she called Amelia out for it, claiming that she was fleeing from her issues and that her husband, not the balloon, was to blame for the happiness Amelia had discovered in the air. Amelia hears James question her about her spouse as she is getting over her panic attack in the present, but she won't discuss him. They receive a delightful surprise as a kaleidoscope of butterflies suddenly fly about them 
while she tends to his head injury. James is particularly surprised by this because, despite John's conviction that butterflies could fly high after studying them, James had no idea they could. This validates his friend's hypothesis. Amelia is moved by the lovely moment and tells James about Pierre's appreciation of the world's beauty. She also appreciates him for not pressuring her to talk about it while crying. Amelia starts to consider the circumstances that led them to this location once more. She reconsidered the trip after learning about her sister's concerns. She then disregarded the fact that women weren't permitted inside and went inside the British Society building to inform James that the mission had been cancelled and that she would never fly on a balloon again. Later that night, James went to see his parents. He told his mother the news, but kept it from his father so as not to upset him, since he was already experiencing memory loss. He gave his son a set of binoculars to use when he went to the sky, because at least he still remembered how to use the telescope James gave him, and the approaching trip. James is allowing Amelia to assist him in taking notes as they return to the balloon, which is beginning to cover itself in ice. This time, the numbers are thrilling, little by little, they see them rise, and they rejoice when they finally surpass the mark the French had set. They are now formally recognized as the individuals who had flown the highest in human history. Amelia encourages James to put on some warmer clothing after they shake hands and express gratitude for the opportunity to work together. James then sends another pigeon with his results. Amelia wants to land the balloon to prevent her companion from freezing to death, but James hasn't brought any to keep the weight light. James forbids her from doing so, explaining the significance of what they are doing and pointing out how lovely the starry sky is in the process. Amelia agrees on the condition that she gets to decide when it gets too difficult to continue flying, since she remembers that she does find satisfaction in flying not just with her husband. James concurs, so she hurls another bag of sand into the air. The night Amelia decided against going on the vacation is now part of a new memory. John paid her a visit, and he didn't do so at James' behest to convince her that the trip was worthwhile despite the danger. He revealed to her the lovely snowflakes he had sketched in James' research notes and explained that sometimes James was in fact mistaken, predicting snow when it didn't actually fall. But he also discovered some amazing truths, and John felt that it was Amelia's duty to further the cause of science. Amelia went to Pierre's grave after he left to reflect, and when James' predictions came true and it started to snow, she made her decision. The entire balloon, as well as the individuals inside, are covered in frost in the present. James releases a pigeon, but as soon as it tries to go to the air, it falls and dies. James starts to worry that if something were to happen, no one would know where they were. As she points out that his attitude and his now bleeding nose are symptoms of hypoxia, the lack of oxygen is harming his brain, Amelia needs to stop him from throwing out a lot of their belongings. Amelia slaps James for wanting to risk his life for science like Pierre did, while she wants to descend. The actual events were hardly heroic, Amelia had pushed the balloon too forcefully, tearing the seams. The balloon wouldn't come down, no matter how many things they threw away. So Pierre leapt out to save Amelia. James apologizes for his rudeness after hearing such a tale and realizes it is time to leave. Amelia tries to open the gas valve with a rope, but the ice prevents it from working. After telling James to stay alert and prevent hypoxia from taking over, she starts to climb to the top to open the valve manually. She pushes herself to continue until she slips and is left hanging upside down from the rope since this effort is challenging because frostbite is starting to develop in her fingertips. Amelia gets herself together and starts climbing again, this time with a rope tied to her waist, in case she slips again, after reflecting on her husband's death and deciding she can't allow his sacrifice be in vain. By the time Amelia reaches the top, James has passed out. She attempts to use her elbow to push the valve, but it becomes stuck, forcing her to take the chance of getting up and kicking it. This does function, but she must remove her boot and place it between the valve and the balloon to keep it open. The moment she succeeds in doing so, she too loses consciousness, only to awaken minutes later, when the balloon starts to descend and she goes off the edge. The British Society and Amelia's family are concerned since they haven't seen the balloon come back yet, and the predicted arrival time has gone while they are still on the ground. They make an effort to remain upbeat, but since learning about them typically entails learning about a catastrophe, they should view the absence of communication as a sign of progress and simply wait. Amelia is found hanging from the balloon by the rope she had fastened around her waist which had saved her life. To get to the basket, she swings it a couple of times. When she is back inside, she tries to rouse James up. Amelia initially fears she may have lost him when there is no reaction, but happily, after much trembling, he responds to her cry. Before tending to her frostbitten hands, he takes their final readings, halting only when it begins to snow to collect a snowflake for further examination. Amelia responds to his sister's query about why she wanted to fly again, by stating that she wants all she has lost to have meant something 
while they wait for the balloon to complete lowering. James responds by mentioning some of the discoveries he's made, but most significantly, the beauty he's witnessed, which Amelia agrees with, and the fact that they've brought stars closer. Amelia suddenly realizes that they are moving at the same pace as the snow, which is hovering rather than falling. The balloon is falling, and it is the only explanation for this. They start throwing things out of the basket to save weight after removing the valve, and subsequently her shoe, including their jackets and James' tools, when he pulls off his notes from the notebook. They initially lose hope because this is still insufficient, but then James has an idea. They both climb into the balloon hoop, and he cuts the ropes to release the basket as well. Amelia considers making the same sacrifice her husband did, since the balloon is now plummeting at a very dangerous rate but James intervenes just in time to prevent her. He comes up with a novel idea. By cutting the strings holding the balloon in place, the silk is pushed up turning it into a parachute. Now that it is dropping more gradually, it is still quite a trip for them, because the balloon drags Amelia across the ground and crashes into some trees, causing James to tumble. After briefly losing consciousness, she quickly seeks out James, meeting him halfway because he had also been seeking for her. Together, they assist one another in getting up and going back home. On that particular day, they are said to have ascended to a height of 37,000 feet, 7 miles. James' parents witness the news coverage of their triumph and are pleased with their son. James has gained the admiration of his peers for his discoveries, which demonstrate the presence of layers in the atmosphere and pave the way for the first weather forecasts. Amelia and James create a new balloon to go flying again and carry on their studies after spending some time with her sister and nieces, since they mustn't forget to live.